Hello everyone, my name is Derek Hennon and I'm going to talk to you today about the millipedes of Ohio and hopefully get you excited for the Ohio Field Guide to Millipedes uh, that is going to be published either by the time you see this recording or soon after by the Ohio Division of Wildlife. So um, this field guide will be the first uh, update to the state's millipedes and centipedes since 1928, so it's been a long time coming. Um, you can see some examples of what the field guide uh, species accounts will look like there on the right. Um, and really what we're trying to do with this field guide is to give a um, good overview based on photos of the state's millipede fauna. And so um, each species includes collar photos, and it's not a dichotomous key. Um, we're really just trying to focus on the field characters that you'll see for these things. Um, in total, it's got information on 51 species of millipedes, and it also includes some information on millipede relatives as well. So we included some pages on centipedes and some other myriapods that you might encounter in the state. So uh, a common question that I get is, are millipedes insects? And the answer is no. Um, they're kind of their own thing. Uh, they're part of a group called myriapods. And so they're arthropods, but they're not insects. Kind of like how spiders aren't insects, uh, neither are millipedes or centipedes. And so um, the two myriapods that you're probably already familiar with are the centipedes and the millipedes, but there are also two smaller groups, um, literally in this case. Uh, both symphylans, sometimes called garden centipedes, and poropods um, are just typically a couple millimeters uh, long, and the biggest one is uh, the garden centipede, which can get up to about a centimeter or so long. So, you know, if you're gardening or just kind of down in the dirt looking for any other kinds of bugs, you might run into these two smaller ones, but it's more likely that you're going to run into millipedes and centipedes. And so, um, millipedes are in their own class, the diplopoda, and they're most easily recognizable by having two pairs of legs on most of their body segments. And so, on the uh, right side here, I've got a smattering of millipede diversity. Oftentimes they're going to be cylindrical um, or uh, flat-backed, but we also have some strange ones, uh, kind of like the bristly millipede up there at the top, that can be confused for a beetle larva or something that's not a millipede. Um, so they can come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. Worldwide, there are about 12,000 species, and here in North America, we have about 2,000 species. Uh, and millipedes typically are living in forests. Um, you can find them under leaf litter, under logs, kind of those kinds of protected places. Um, some of the main features to identify millipedes are a certain um, leg pair that they have. And so um, this is one of our brown crested millipedes in Ohio. And uh, we have three species in the state. They all pretty much look the same. But to identify it to species, you need to examine these legs, which are called gonopods. So if we flip this millipede over, this is where the gonopods are on the seventh ring. Um, this isn't really a character you can see in the field. So in these instances where a millipede can only be identified by the shape of the gonopods, those accounts are kind of lumped together just under the um, genus. Um, in this case, this is a bassion. And so you can really see just how these gonopods look really strange for being derived legs. Um, and so, you know, oftentimes I compare them to glass sculptures. Like you could put those things on a chandelier and it wouldn't look out of place. Um, but that's a pretty uh, intensive character to use to identify it. So we stick to field characters for this guide and kind of things that you'd be able to see just from a photograph or maybe if you have a hand lens or a magnifying glass with you. And so the theme for today's conference is the cardinal rule that everything is, co is connected. So let's examine how uh, millipedes, what role they play in their ecosystem. And their main role really is as detritivores. So they're eating dead leaves, other dead plant material, and you can consider them the recyclers of the undergrowth. They're kind of churning through the leaf litter and everything else, which helps in soil forming and really breaking down um, all this dead plant material into smaller pieces so that microorganisms can then use that um, and really unlock the nutrients, um, make that into more soil, things like that. Uh, millipedes themselves are highly endemic and they have low dispersal abilities. So they have a habit of having their distributions really influenced by um, physical features such as mountains or rivers. In Ohio, um, glaciation has really affected their distribution a lot in the state, which is something we'll cover a little bit later. 
Um, they also showcase some biogeographical similarities to other or organisms such as plethodon and salamanders or harvesters. Um, and so they can be used to sort of examine these interesting biogeographical questions about how a certain um, group of organisms came to um, be living in a certain place, which is pretty cool. Um, they're also prey of other things like arthropods, some vertebrates, and also fungi. So on the bottom right there, you can see a uh, true bug. That is an assassin bug, and this is one of the millipede assassins. It's a species called Rigenia cruciata, and we have it through Ohio, and they specialize um, just on millipedes rather than being generalists like other assassin bugs are. Um, right next to that bug are a group of millipedes that have been killed by a fungus. And so um, this is a fungus that was described a few years ago that really um, uh, gets inside the millipede and then bursts out between its segments. So that kind of granular cotton candy bands of white that you see on that millipede on top is the fungus bursting out of the body. And if you look closely at that photo, you can see tiny little flies walking over it. And so these flies are probably helping um, those spores to spread throughout um, other parts of the forest where these millipedes live. And so if we take a closer look, um, this photo on the left is a, a cherry millipede. Uh, and this photo was taken in Lawrence County in southern Ohio a couple years ago. And that zoomed in photo on the right shows all those spores that burst forth from between the millipede segments. And this seems to happen um, after a rain, and it seems to be pretty widespread in the state, both in southern Ohio and northern. So if you keep an eye out for millipedes that are kind of high up on a log or um, a branch or something, it could have this fungus. Another question I often get about millipedes is, you know, why choose to study them? And so this really started for me uh, during my undergrad, which I did at Marietta College. Um, I learned about the Edge of Appalachia Preserve down in Adams County, which is um, a field station run by the, the Cincinnati Museum Center and the Nature Conservancy. One weekend they were doing a um, workshop on how to identify millipedes. So I was like, sure, I'll go. And they, since I was a student, they gave me a scholarship and I spent the weekend just learning about millipedes and centipedes, which is really cool to me. Um, and something I learned there was that some millipedes will fluoresce under UV light. So that got me wanting to go out at night and look for millipedes. And it was my luck that Marietta College had just acquired the Barbara A. Beiser Field Station. And so I was able to go there, look for millipedes. And there's one particular millipede that you can see here in this slide. Uh, this is the salmon cherry millipede. And these were all over the field station. Um, it's a, you know, it's kind of drab, I guess, in normal light. But I went out one night, turned on uh, my UV flashlight and just kind of shined it along the ground. I saw dozens of, the, of these things just crawling up. And so they just sort of lit up the leaf, the leaf litter, like a bunch of tiny stars just going between the leaves. And that's when it clicked for me. And I was like, OK, yeah, I want to study these guys. Um, so these are just a great um, group of animals to really go out and learn more about uh, because probably don't know quite too much about them yet. So hopefully that's something that this millipede guide is gonna solve. So previous work in Ohio, um, really the main thing was a uh, um, paper in the Ohio Biological Survey from 1928. Um, this was by Williams and Hefner, who were based at, Oxford, at Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. And so they reported 43 species in the state as either um, known or likely occurring. Um, but unfortunately, this is now pretty outdated. It's got errors. Um, the taxonomy, the names have changed a whole lot. Um, and so, you know, historically it's interesting, but it's not quite as useful these days. Um, but since then, um, starting with various papers in the 1940s by um, three of North America's main taxonomists of millipedes, Hoffman, Shear, and Shelley, a lot of these taxonomic problems have been solved. And so that kind of puts um, right now a great time to get into millipedes because a lot of this um, sort of groundwork has already been done, but there's still a lot of work to be done in Ohio itself. And so that's kind of what got me started uh, on working on these things in Ohio. Um, I used a couple different sources to compile this list to form the field guide. Um, part of that was these literature records by going through these scientific papers and seeing which species had been reported in Ohio, in Ohio before, as well as uh, new field work. Um, part of this was funded by the Ohio Biological Survey. Um, in 2014, they gave me a grant to um, look for some millipedes in the state, and that kind of kicked things off for me and was a big help. 
Um, there's also additional collecting by um, some collectors I want to highlight. Melissa Spring, Laura Hughes, Mark Zaloba. They've all sent me a good amount of specimens I've proven pretty useful for figuring out the distributions of some of these things in Ohio. Um, I did my grad work in Arkansas and Virginia, so I would come back to Ohio when I could to look for more millipedes. Um, a huge help was also the community on iNaturalist. And so if you don't know, iNaturalist is a website where you can upload various um, uh, nature photos. And so the Ohio Biological Survey is doing a virtual um, bio blitz for the state to where if you upload any organism, it'll be um, included in this project. And there were a lot of millipedes involved in those. So taking together all these different sources, I came up with 3,300 records. And you can see this point map showing where these uh, millipedes come from. So a lot of it comes from these highly populated areas in the state um, you can also make out the Hocking Hills region, which is a great place for millipedes. But you can also see a lot of spots ha um, are empty in the state. So there's still a lot of work to be done to find out exactly where in the state some of these millipedes occur. So pulling together all of these records, um, that gives us nine orders, 17 families, and 51 species of millipedes in Ohio. So that's pretty good. Um, within the state, it's most diverse in the southern and the eastern portions of the state. And these um, kind of coincide with the unglaciated and more forested regions of the state. And that's really where you're going to be finding um, the most diversity of millipedes. So to visualize what this diversity looks like, um, here's all the species broken down by order in this pie chart. And you can immediately see that um, a little over three quarters of our species are from just three different orders. The polydesmida, the flat-backed millipedes, the julida, the worm-like millipedes, and the cordomatida, the sausage millipedes. They kind of look like sausages if you squint, um, so that's where they get their common name. And these are the most diverse millipede orders worldwide, so it makes sense. Um, we also have a couple of other minor orders that have just a few species in them. Um, probably one of the most recognizable species in the state is the American millipede, so that's here in the top right um, in the order Spirobolida. And so that's one of the more... Um, easily observed millipedes, but we have a whole bunch of um, other ones in the state. And so to kind of dig into some of the more uncommon or rare ones, um, a really interesting part of this work was that uh, we ended up finding a new species in Washington County. And so this is a species of roughback millipede in the genus Pseudotremia. And these are very um, diverse throughout the Appalachians. There are a lot of cave species as well. But this is one that was just found in the leaf litter. Um, currently, the only other known species in the state is Pseudotremia salicae, which was recorded in Lawrence County in southern Ohio. So even now, um, we're able to find more um, state and county records and even an entirely new species. And so I'm currently working on this and hoping to describe this species uh, soon so we can put a name on it and hopefully find out more about it. Um, other things that came out of this work were new state and county records. Um, in the bottom left, that is a species of Striaria. This is only known from Adams County, and no males have been collected yet, so we haven't been able to identify it to species. But that wasn't known from the state before. Um, neither was Appalachioria, uh, Separanda calcarea, and that's another one from Lawrence County. So really in southern Ohio, there's still a lot of work to be done to figure out um, exactly which species are here. Um, throughout the rest of the state, um, there are also new populations being found. So Conotyla ocipedes, um, that was one I found in Athens County, um, and it was previously only known from Fairfield County. This is a group of millipedes, uh, Conotyla, that are more active in the winter. So there aren't many people out looking for them around that time, but maybe if we can get more people looking, we'll be able to figure out more about um, where this thing lives. Um, Rutilore moacana is another one that we were able to get some new county records for. Um, it was originally described from Mohican State Park in the northern part of the state, but has since been found in the Hocking Hills region and Athens County. So there are still a lot that we have to learn about millipedes in the state. Um, not only millipedes, um, the, the field guide also includes some information on some of these other myriapods. So centipedes, garden centipedes, and poropods. Um, it doesn't go into as much detail as it does about the millipedes, but information and photos on these are included so that if you do encounter one of these, one of these you'll kind of know what you're looking at. Um, just like the millipedes, they're more diverse in the southern portion of the state. 
Um, and there's just still a lot of work remaining to be done um, on these myriapods in the state. So hopefully in the future we can learn more and maybe put out a guide to centipedes and poropods and garden centipedes as well. So um, that takes me into, you know, what I'm hoping to come out of this in the future. Um, and it, a lot of it boils down to trying to document, document these species ranges better. Um, a lot of them we just don't have very much data for. Um, Sturaria and Conotyla are some of these sausage millipedes, and that is probably the least known order in the state. Um, a lot of our um, distribution maps for these look like the ones on the right here, where it's just, you know, one spot in one county or a couple from various counties. But there are gaps between these areas. So it's likely that these populations are contiguous, but we just don't know where they are yet. Um, another big uh, question is which millipede species um, are, have crossed the Ohio River from Kentucky and West Virginia? Because we know of other species that come up pretty close to the border, but haven't been recorded for Ohio before. So is it that um, these are stopped by the Ohio River, which is a pretty good biogeographical barrier, or is it that we just haven't looked well enough yet? Um, and, you know, when are we looking for these millipedes as well? Um, a number of the sausage millipedes are more active during the winter, which is a time that I'm not really out collecting millipedes very often, and neither are other people. But if we start to make a concerted effort, we might turn up some interesting and unexpected new records in the state. And really, it boils down to that we need more people looking for these animals. Um, and we need to just kind of get some more eyes and ears out there and see what we can find. Um, we don't really know how rare some of these species are. Um, we know that we know which of the species are common because we have a lot of records for those, things like the introduced greenhouse millipede or the American millipede. Um, those are pretty well documented in the state. But some of these others, we just don't know. And from that, do we need to worry about these for conservation? Um, so we're battling with, you know, this, some of these species that we know are only from a couple of spots. Is that because um, we're just not out looking for them? Or are they really, truly rare, and so we haven't been able to find them yet? So if we can get more people looking, then we have a better uh, chance of figuring out which of these species may be a concern for conservation. Um, and so hand collecting is um, the, really the main way to look for millipedes. Um, you know, it's just when you're out flipping over logs or leaves. But if we also incorporate new methods like leaf litter extraction with burlazy funnels, pitfall traps, that could get us a lot of new um, distribution records for millipedes in Ohio. So I'm hoping that in the future um, we'll be able to do some of that. So that bring, brings me to the, the acknowledgments. Um, a lot of people have supported this work. Um, during my own undergrad at Merida College, the Department of Biology was huge in just getting me started on millipedes. So I want to give a shout out to Dave McShafrey and Katie Lustafin. Um, my colleague on this talk, uh, Jeff Brown, he also wanted uh, me to make sure we highlight Wright State University and partic particularly John Steyerman for his help um, in uh, helping uh, Jeff get started as well. Jeff and I actually met through a bug guide and he had an interest in beetles and then um, we just started collecting together and kind of working on specimens. Um, so it's really been a group effort. Um, the Ohio Biological Survey, Ohio Division of Wildlife, and State Parks and Nature Preserves have all been a help with funding as well as um, permits to collect. And the Eds of Appalachia Preserve staff um, have always offered uh, to allow uh, me to collect on their land and figure out what cool millipedes they have. So that's been a big help as well. Um, and I also want to highlight the iNaturalist community, people who are just uploading their spottings of millipedes to the website. Um, and also all the photographers who have contributed photos for the field guide. And so they're thanked individually in the booklet, but we had uh, over 20 people help us out with photographs. And with that, I'll take any questions. Um, if you have any questions for me that we don't get to, you can email me at darehinnon at gmail.com. You can check out uh, Dear Millipede on Twitter for more. And, you know, if this makes you want to get out and look for millipedes, um, share your spottings on websites like iNaturalist. Um, and I hope this really, hopefully the guide will be out by the time you're seeing this or soon. And thank you for your attention.